Hi, Caleb with Brownhouse here, and in today's video, I want to go through basic maintenance on the Gen 5 Glock. Uh, so let's just actually jump right into it. Um, I have a bunch of different tools here laid out, and I'll go through what we're using as I use it, and uh, just kind of go from there. So this is the Glock we're going to be working on here. This is a Glock 47. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, we have a dedicated video on it. I'd recommend go checking that one out. Uh, so. First things first, uh, step one and two here, I'll just jump into those real quick. Uh, step one, move the magazine and make sure the firearm is unloaded. Uh, step two is a little bit easier. We're not gonna remove the magazine, but we are indeed gonna double check that our firearm is unloaded. And basic takedown for this Glock, as well as pretty much any other Glock, is going to be to uh, pull the firearm slightly out of battery Pull down on your takedown lever here on both sides. All right, and then once that's down, release your slide. Let go of your levers, and if you notice, they'll stay at the halfway position. And from here, you can just pull the trigger, and the slide will come right off. All right, so I'm gonna set the frame down here, and to remove your recoil spring, all you do is simply just kind of slightly compress it and lift up. It is a captured spring, so nothing's gonna go flying anywhere, which is great, we like captured springs. And now we can remove the barrel. To do that, all you do is just simply push up on it, and I'm just pushing up on it from the bottom there, and just lift it right out. It comes right out just like that. All right, and if you go into the Glock manual, it'll tell you all the different lubrication points and things like that. Um, I, I probably won't do every single one or I'll do some extra ones or, or something like that, probably. Um, but I'm just gonna show you how I clean and maintain this handgun and this is, uh, this is a really good way to do it. So all I'm doing right now, I'm just gonna take my rag, take my barrel, and I'm just gonna wipe it down. That's all you gotta do. Just wipe uh, all around the outside here. And I'm just gonna just kind of get as much as I can there before I actually start uh, going through and cleaning the bore. And I'm gonna wipe down the outside again once I do that. Uh, you'll see why, because that brush will get stuff everywhere. And speaking of brushes, let's talk about a few different options here. So I'm using this brass bristle brush on a dewy coated rod. And I'm also going to be using a jag to drive my patches. All right. Now, I have a boar snake set here on the table. Whenever I'm doing dedicated cleanings like this and I'm pulling the barrel out, I typically don't use a boar snake. Uh, you can get a better clean with something like this, uh, but it is more time consuming. So if you're at the range and you just want to punch your boar at the range, um, or if you just need to run something through your boar real quick, Boar snakes are really nice. You don't have to take the gun apart. You can just run them through with the slide locked open and those work well. Uh, but like I said, for this, we're gonna be using a dedicated rod for the reasons mentioned before. Okay, so speaking of that, let me get my coffee out the way because Hoppy's number nine smells good, but it does not taste good. And uh, it's probably super bad for you as well. All right, so when using my cleaning brush, I don't dip the brush into the bottle because that just contaminates the bottle, right? What I'll do is, in this case, I'll just pour a little bit in the cap and then I'll dump out the excess when I'm done. Just a little bit in there. All right. Dip my brush in. And coming in from the chamber, we'll push her cleaning brush all the way in. All right, and then pull it back through. All right, and we're just gonna do this a handful of times. Break up all that carbon, copper, lead, whatever's in there. And there's no magic number as to how much you need to do this. It all depends on how dirty your gun is, and what type of ammo you were shooting through it, all that stuff. All right. And then from here, you can just remove your brush. We'll set that aside. All right, we can screw our jag on. And with all the solvents and stuff in the bore, I just take a dry patch and run that through first. You just 
put it on that spear point jag just like so. Coming in from the chamber end again. And should be nice and stiff. I'm trying to go nice and slow so you can see it here. There we go. And you can see that patch will come out pretty dirty. And I'll throw that down there. And then for my next patch, I usually put a bit of oil on that one. And the oil I'm using is the Sons of Liberty Spec 76 oil. And I like using this one for video, especially these types of videos, uh, because it's a really dark oil and that lets you see very easily where I'm putting it. Run that patch through. And you can run patches through here all day long. If your patches are still coming out really dirty, uh, you can go back through and brush it again. There's, you can't, you can't over brush it. This is a nitrided barrel and those are brass bristles. So you're, you're not gonna hurt this barrel. All right, if I can get the sorcery of separating patches down here. All right. All right, for all intents and purposes, we will call that good. That's a nice, nice shiny bore now. We'll set those dirty patches aside as well as our brush. We're not gonna need our brush anymore. All right. And I'll just come through again and just wipe off the outside of my barrel. I'm gonna take a Q-tip and I'll show you some places to get here. So the places that usually get pretty dirty around this, this top locking block here, right around the hood. So get it, get around that hood Q-tips work great for that. Same thing with the bottom on the, the actual uh, locking lugs. You'll get underneath that. And if you have some really stubborn debris on here, uh, you can always use an all-purpose brush like this and just hit it to loosen up any of that stuff. And you can also dip this in your solvent. All right. And that's really all you need to do. Um, I'll hit the crown as well, which is the end of your muzzle right here. And that looks pretty good. So now we can just set our barrel aside. And let's move on to the rest of the slide. So if you flip your si slide upside down, you'll notice there's a, there's a lot going on here. There's a few, few components here. You have your striker, you have your striker safety, uh, your extractor, things like that. We're not gonna remove any of that. We'll save that for a, a dedicated, like detailed clean video. And I'll usually remove that stuff and clean it like once a year or so, uh, depending on how much I'm shooting the gun. Um, but for this, just kinda wipe everything down here. And if you notice, there's a lot of hard to reach places. So you can use some Q-tips for that. And this is one area I will typically hit it with the brush to help loosen up all of that stuff. Especially your, your, uh, your, your breech face right here. You're gonna wanna hit that pretty good. All right, then come through with some clean cotton tipped swabs. And just get all those areas. And if you notice, there's a Especially if you have a newer Glock, it almost looks like a like a copper anti-seize. Um, it's just a, a shiny grease. That's the the Glock factory one, and it's recommended to they recommend keeping that on through the break-in period. Something in that grease helps you know, break in your gun properly. All right, there we go, and you don't have to get all of it out. Um, and those slide rails right there, really easy to get in there if you're using a brush. 
And if you have it available to you, you can get in there with some compressed air as well. And help blow all that stuff out of there. And we'll just get as much as we can here. And this is one of those things, I don't try to get it perfect. I just try and get the majority of it, because like I said, I do a really detailed um, cleaning about once a year. And that's where I get the rest of everything. Um, so that was pretty much it for the slide. All you got to do is just wipe out all that stuff there. And uh, we'll go through more when we hit that lubrication part here, whenever we're getting ready to reassemble. And if you're running an optic like this one here, uh, you can clean your optic. Just take some clean cotton patches and you know wipe down that optic. And that's really all you need to do with that. Now the, the uh, recoil spring assembly typically doesn't get too dirty. I just wiped that off with a, with a rag. If yours is really dirty and you have a bunch of gunk down in there, uh, just take a can of compressed air and blow it on out of there. That's all you gotta do. Don't worry about trying to disassemble that. All right, now let's move on to the frame. So if you look, there's a, a lot going on here. Again, that's something we'll disassemble in the detailed uh, video. This is just the basic here. And all we need to do is just wipe everything down. We'll take our brush here and just kind of help us break up all that, all that gunk that's in there. And then you can wipe it down with your rag. Use your cotton tip swabs here. Help get those hard to reach places. All right, there we go. And I'll just, if I'm using a small rag like this, I'll usually just kind of shove it down in the mag well and just kind of carefully pull it through. And that's it. That's all you got to do for the frame, all right? Now, um, let's talk about the most neglected piece of your firearm, and that is the magazine. All right, so to remove a Glock magazine base plate, uh, we have a dedicated video on that, actually, but we're just going to use a tool to help us out here. Uh, this is the one from Fix-It Sticks, but there's a lot of them out there. I'm just going to insert it into the hole in the base plate here and cam it to open it up. carefully remove the floor plates, pointing it directly at my head. There we go. All right, and all you need to do is just take a rag, wipe off any lint, dust, you know, whatever's on there. And again, with the rag, I typically stuff it in the magazine. And just kind of pull it on through. All right. now. Let's go through reassembly and lubrication, and we're actually gonna go ahead and start with the magazine. So what I'm gonna do for this, I use a dry lube. I don't use any wet lubricants in my magazine uh, because magazines get full of lint and stuff like that, especially if it's your carry gun. And um, a wet lubricant mixed with lint will just turn into a gunk and just uh, make things harder to clean and potentially cause issues down the road. So I'm just gonna take this spring with some dry lube and lightly coat it, reassemble it. The base plate retainer goes on top of the spring and the base plate slides on the front. Just like that. And this should spring down and spring back up real nice there. That's it for the magazine. All right. Now, let's skip on over to the slide real quick here. All right, so all of your wear areas, and if you're shooting your firearm, if you shot it you know, through the broken period and things like that, you'll be able to see where, where the wear is, all right? So all you need to do is just take a little bit of gun oil, your favorite gun oil doesn't have to be this one, and just put a little bit on those surfaces where there's some obvious friction. 
that locking block area is one. The front, the front um, of the lockup right here is one. I'll put a little bit on the sides of the hood. A little dot there, a little dot there. And notice I'm not drowning this thing in oil. I'm just putting little dots here and there. All right. And on the barrel, towards the end here, I'll actually just run a bead down the barrel and just wipe it in with my fingers for a nice light coat. All right. Now, to reassemble this barrel into this slide here, I'm going to go in muzzle first and just slide it on through till it falls flat and then just push it back till it clicks in. All right, there you go. And lubrication points on the slide here. I'm just gonna put a drop on the striker safety. And you can see some wear here on this channel. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil there. All right, a little bit on the bottom of that striker. And don't put any oil down in here with your striker in that channel. You don't need to put any lubricant down there. Uh, that's designed so that you don't need to oil it. There's a plastic sleeve in there that makes everything uh, nice and self-lubricating. So don't, uh, don't stick a bunch of oil in there. That's just going to attract, not attract, but uh, allow different types of debris to gather. And a lot of people at this point will come in and run a bead down their, their slide rails. I'm going to do that on the frame. So that's all I'm really going to do here. Now, uh, for your recoil spring assembly, um, you can put a little bit on the outside here. That's perfectly fine. On these dual, kind of like dual chambered recoil springs here, I'll actually just put a few dots around that inside area. And really, that's it. Um, if you want, you can actually take some dry lube and hit this as well. That's perfectly acceptable. All right. So to reinstall our recoil spring, we're going to take the fat end, put that in first in the front, and then lightly compress it and push it all the way down as far as it'll go into that barrel. And it'll nest up in there just like that. And that's it for the slide. We'll set that aside. And let's jump on over to the frame. This is where things get a little interesting. Now, before we do any of the slide rails and things like that, um, I want to lubricate the connector. And if you notice, if I pull forward on this trigger a little bit, uh, you can see it. Let me get a good pointing tool here. So this little arm sticking up is the connector. I'll give you a better view of it here in just a moment. And if you notice, this trigger bar is sliding against that connector right up in there, right? And they're, they're kind of rubbing against each other. And this is what's forcing your trigger bar downward to release the actual striker, all right? So uh, if you pull your trigger all the way forward, it'll click. And then if you just kind of release that trigger safety there, it'll, it'll go back to the rear position, which is where it needs to be to reassemble the gun. Don't forget that. Uh, but let me just kind of show you here. So there's a through pin that goes through the back of your Glock here. The factory pin is indeed a plastic pin. And all you need to do is punch that out. And it's not in there super tight. There's just some friction holding it in. And this is the same pin you would remove if you're going to put on the, uh, the optional grips that the Glocks come with. All right. So we'll just punch that right out. And now from here, this is your uh, this piece right here is your ejector. You can just lift up slightly on that, and this will kind of pop out so you get access to it. So this metal piece right here, this is your connector. So all we're gonna do is just kind of lift up on it a little bit here to expose the top of the connector and I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing here and you don't need to remove any of it we're just gonna take a little bit of grease and if you if it's dirty or if there's any old grease or anything on there 
You just take a cotton swab, wipe it off, take some new grease, and put a bit on there. Just like that, that's all you need. And then once that's on there, you just take this group in the back here, this trigger group, and push it down in there. Just push it back down, it'll seat. Uh, just make sure your pin holes lined up. Take your pin and push it all the way back in. And I'm just gonna seat it flush here. Just like that. Now I'm gonna take my trigger, work it back and forth to get that grease nice and worked in there. And uh, that's all we need the grease for. So now with this, I'm just gonna take my slide rails, which there's four slide rails, right? There's one, two, three, and four. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a dot of oil on the top and on the side. All right. And then a little bit on the top of the trigger bar here. This is where it engages your striker safety. And then a little bit on the sear surface here, all right? Okay, so now that's really all we need to do. If you want, you can put a little, you notice there's a wear mark right here. Uh, that is your slide lock where it's, uh, excuse me, your slide stop where it engages the slide. And just because it's exposed metal, we'll just put a dot right there. Okay, um, you can also do the locking block area, the slide lock area, but all of that is already lubricated on our slide. Um, so, we don't really need to worry about that. All right, so to reassemble the Glock, all you need to do is to make sure your trigger is back in the back position there. Line up your front rails. Go down the back here. Make sure your ejector clears. It has a slot that it goes into. Go all the way back. And then to lock everything back up, all you have to do is cock it, just like that and now your Glock is reassembled. Uh, to do a function check, all you need to do is pull the trigger. All right, then we'll pull the trigger again, this time keeping it held back. Pull the slide back, let it go forward, slowly release that trigger, make sure it resets. And that's all there is to it. Um, now, if you're having an issue getting your slide on, I'll take it apart to kind of replicate it here, duplicate it, you know. So if you're having an issue, I'm just gonna throw my guide ride off, off a little bit because that's usually the issue. Let's say you get to you know this point right here, you can't get your, your slide to go back. Check and make sure that recoil assembly is in the middle, centered and pushed flat. And that should clear up the issue. All right, so that is basic maintenance on the Glock handgun. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them down below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching this on the website or you just need help with anything, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.